Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about Microsoft's GitHub skilling YouTube DL. Will it survive? Well, I believe it will because the Linux community is versatile like that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Of course, um, mostly this is a GitHub issue as um, GitHub is where YouTube DL and many other open source applications are, uh, are found. And, uh, of course, Microsoft, if you don't remember, acquired GitHub, uh, was it last year, two years ago, somewhere around there on this undated announcement that, uh, they acquired GitHub. And when they did this, a lot of people were like, well, they're not particularly all that friendly to things. And are they really going to even go to bat for anybody utilizing their service? And the answer really is no. Uh, of course, Microsoft under under Git on, under Microsoft's leadership, GitHub is now buying full fledged into the wokeness culture. So it might be worthy of jumping ship to something else as an alternative later. So of course, this is from this summer here. They're removing coding terms like master and slave. Master, master, where's those slaves that I've been after? I mean, come on, man, this is just insane. Uh, and if you want a, a deeper dive into the code analysis of this, um, the uh, Gardner Bryant, uh, the formerly the Linux gamer, did an excellent breakdown where he went into the actual code itself, challenging some of the claims of this takedown request. And I'm not going to get into all of the code stuff. I'll refer you to his video where he actually gets a copy of the repository. He's showing you code snippets. Uh, some things possibly validating and many things completely invalidating the um, the comments that were made by the RIAA, uh, which has weaponized DMCA to take down YouTube DL. And then if we head on over to YouTube DL's page, you can see you can still download the things. You do have a Windows download if you want to go ahead and grab it now while it functions. You can grab the full tarball and uh, you can deploy it the same way that I showed you how to deploy a, uh, an application on Linux just manually, un unzipping it into the opt folder and then... Um, you know, adding manually adding desktop icons, things like that. And of course, they say over here, our de uh, dev repository is taken down in a DMCA copyright takedown by the RIAA, possibly an organization more hated than Comcast. Go figure it out. So of course, if you go over and have a look at a variety of things, this is uh, YouTube DL's actual page. There isn't a page here. Ha 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 ha. Um, here is a list from GitHub slash DMCA, with, which has the actual copyright takedown. GitHub, dear sir or madam. There, there's how, I mean, you know, the only other place I see dear sir or madam I see is in skimmers. Dear sir or madam, send us $1,000 and we'll send you $10 million. <laughs> please. So anyway, dear sir or madam, and it doesn't take much now that the woke Microsoft took over over here. So it says, I'm contacting you on behalf of the uh, the devil himself, uh, seated at RIAA and its member companies. They're a trade association whose member companies. Basically, we're going to represent um, all of the evil of the music industry and things like that. And they're basically saying, hey, we have learned that your service is hosting YouTube DL source code on its network in the following locations. And they're all now down. And so basically all these, I, I'm pretty sure they're all down. I, I, I only pulled up these four just as quick samples there. And they're saying, hey, I don't know what's up with this private one. What's this private one? This, this, this guy's like, just here, we'll give you millions of dollars. Just don't shut us down because we know you're into extortion. And so who knows what's going on with that. But they're basically saying that this code, uh, this list represents a sample of YouTube DL forks. So basically they're taking out YouTube DL and all forks thereof. Uh, and the source code being hosted on, on GitHub based on the review of the representative sample data noted above, we have in good faith belief most of the YouTube DL forks are infringing to the same extent as the parent repository. In other words, we didn't even look into it. It's just, it's related to it. So take it down, Microsoft. 
The clear purpose of the source code is to circumvent the technological protection measures used by authorized streaming services such as YouTube and reproduce and distribute the music and sound recordings owned by our member companies without authorization. There is zero basis whatsoever. See, I have right here a pair of scissors and I can use these scissors and I can murder somebody with these scissors or I can use these piece of scissors, take this uh, useless voting stuff and I can make a little craft and go... Ah, uh, I heart the upcoming election. So you can do that. You can't say that these scissors are an instrument designed to commit murder. They're scissors designed to cut things. Now, a unlawful person can take the scissors and commit murder, or a lawful person can use them and make a Valentine card out of the election stuff. Although I'm not sure if anything that is more hateful than giving somebody a Valentine out of election materials. Nevertheless, they say that the purpose of the, the the clear purpose of the source code is to circumvent the technological protections. No, that is not the clear purpose because a lot of videos on YouTube are under a license that are freely downloadable and distributable. Um, somebody is downloading my videos and putting them up on library. Um, I left library. I don't really care to go on to library at this point in time. Maybe I'll revisit again in the future. I have a video as to why. And for the gentleman doing that, please correct my last name. It is spelled with an a, a Y, not an I. Maybe I'll email you eventually. But hey, you watch my videos, so maybe you'll get that. If you could just correct that, please. And I'll also add a link to my primary website in the bottom. Okay, go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> but anyway, that being said, um, clearly you can use YouTube DL and download my videos. Um, you can use my, you know, you can use it and download a lot of uh, a lot of different things. But you know, the the fact of the matter is that's not exclusively for that. Because as a content creator, I might need a clip from something. YouTube DL allows me to extract a copy and make a clip. By the way, if you kill YouTube DL, I actually have means of getting a clip another way. I mean, I'm not going to tell you those so that the RIAA doesn't get any, any good ideas and start saying, you can use our music unrestricted, so kill it all. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to put other projects at risk either. Um, but the fact of the matter is, no, it's not the clear purpose of the code. The clear purpose of the code is to grab a copy of a YouTube video, which is probably going to be legal. And number two, there is zero basis for number two to reproduce and distribute music and sound recordings. No, find me a case where somebody is clearly, where YouTube DL clearly says our purpose is clearly to download so you can redistribute music illegally. No, it's still a violation of law. And I'll ask, don't use YouTube DL in ways that violate the law for sure. All right. Uh, but that being said, the fact of the matter is RIAA doesn't like anything that, that does this type of stuff. And so they're saying, hey, here's the exhibit. Uh, the source code expressly suggests to use it. Now, this is the part where um, uh, Bryant did in his video uh, where he actually said, no, these weren't here as tests that they were not explicit in there. In fact, you wouldn't even find these unless you dug through the source code. Should those been on the source code on the GitHub page? No, but they weren't in the readme. They weren't examples to use. It was test code stuff, which by the way, they may or may not have worked. There are videos that YouTube DL will not work on. I have encountered them before. Um, so for whatever purpose that might be. And so they're basically making an entire thing saying the purpose of the software is to grab music and illegally copy it and distribute it. Uh, you're stretching. I mean, you're, you're stretching. And they're not. But they issued the takedown. Of course, hey, you can see this. So in their takedown, hey, see this guy here. Yes, sorry, we can't see that. You took it down. So it has becomes very hard to actually go back and vet what is said in all of this. Fortunately, uh, Bryant did an excellent job of evaluating the claims from the source code perspective. Of course, there's a, an Ars Technica article about this as well, where they... They are actually a fairly balanced list. They they look at both sides. Yes, it is possible to download some music on here that that you uh, may not otherwise be able to. But on the other hand, they do come in here and say that, yeah, there is actually a valid use for keeping it around. Of course, the EFF have come out and said, or is it EFF or is it EEF, whatever it is. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, EFF comes out and they said, yeah, it's, uh, hey, there it is right there. 
Uh, they call the notice disappointing and counterproductive move because, yes, activists and people, teachers, teachers are perfectly allowed to take any content from YouTube for the purpose of using it in their classroom. That's a legal acceptable purpose, and applications like YouTube DL do that. Obviously, the key purpose is don't break the law, and that is what some people are using the software for. But again, it's like this pair of scissors. I can use this pair of scissors to make a craft and engage in legal uh, legal work, or I can take these scissors and break the law and murder somebody. And I would never advocate doing something like that, but this is just a tool. And YouTube DL is just a tool. So if there's anything else that this is going to do, it is going to tell you to look for the alternatives where you can host things yourself. Because while there is something about having your repository on GitHub, or GitLab is another one that is growing up uh, becoming similar in size at least, still nevertheless you're putting your code and your resources in somebody else's hands. So I head on over to alternative2.net and uh, I here's GitHub. Let's go ahead and look for a self-hosted license. So there's Bitbucket, there's Gitia, there's Gogs, there's Fabricator, there's Gitbucket. So there are many options where somebody could, on their own hosting site, go ahead and do this. Now, does this mean that you're completely pr protected? Oh, no. Guys like, um, I believe... Uh, PayPal just came after Epic hosting for hosting like Gab and, and uh, BitChute, I believe, this last uh, last weekend as well. And so even those are not necessarily safe. But if you're hosting it yourself, you have backups yourself, you can quickly and more, more quickly, more easily deploy it. And you may be able to find a hosting company that's like, I don't care what you say. It's not actually breaking the law. Therefore, go away. And so there's things that can be said one way or the other. Now, obviously, we don't want to in, you know, encourage the use of law-breaking tools, but as long as there is a legitimate legal-based system for it, it should never be restricted. And this is why I focus so much on learning how to self-host my own materials and, and resources, because that is very important. So if you've used one of these alternatives, let me know which one in the comments down there, because, hey, I have a, a lot of free money on Linode right now that I'm testing some things and servers out with. And I'd be glad to spin some of these up, uh, do a tutorial and uh, see if it's a, a good viable solution. So let me know which, uh, which ones you might want to see down there, and I'll see what I can do before the end of the year. So anyway, uh, there's what we have to say. Uh, Microsoft's GitHub decides to uh, take a swing at YouTube DL. I wish the YouTube DL team well, and uh, hopefully somebody comes up and offers uh, and says, hey, we don't really care what these guys say. They're going to have to take us to court. And that's the, the matter. You know, Microsoft's GitHub should have said, you know what? No, we're... We've looked at, at your claim. We found your claim. There could be some potential merit, but we haven't found it complete. They should have worked with them a little bit more uh, because this is a, a large, well-known tool with many legal use case scenarios. We can't just go around and start banning anything and everything that could possibly be used in a crime because we'll end up doing nothing, sitting in a cave. And that's kind of the, the bottom line. So let me know your thoughts to all this. Uh, is this the disturbing future that we saw GitHub coming to? And maybe this is why I'm just really not interested in GitHub. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.